so it's getting closer and closer to the time that I'm hoping to fly to Portugal to go and buy a farm and I've been thinking about all the different things that I need to be considering when choosing a farm and I thought you know what maybe I should share this with everybody else and how about if I put together 10 tips for buying land in Portugal hopefully I'm gonna be following them myself but these are my 10 tips for buying land in Portugal, buying a farm in Portugal, based on lots and lots of research that I've been doing. So, the first tip might sound quite obvious, but what is your purpose? for buying the farm are you hoping to have it as a little summer holiday place are you wanting to live there and start a little homestead are you going to want to focus on crops or vegetables are you going to want to focus on vineyards or olive groves or fruit trees or are you wanting to have livestock you need to know the purpose before you can start looking at properties because otherwise you're going to waste a lot of time just looking at farms you need to know what it is that you are planning to do on that farm the next tip number two might seem very very obvious but you need to know your budget if you don't know how much money you can afford to spend, then don't spend anything yet. I suggest you sort of look and see, you know, are you, how much are you putting away every month? Are you going to be wanting to buy it, buy it and by paying cash? Are you going to be looking for a mortgage? You need to find out all of this information before you can start Look, even looking at farms you need to know exactly what it is you can afford so that when you go and look at farms you're not going to have agents showing you farms that are costing 80,000 euros when you know you've only got 4,000 euros for example so you need to really work out your budget and for the kind of farming you're wanting to do on this farm. What is the upkeep going to be? How much is it going to be costing? How much will you be prepared to spend on fixing up a place to stay in? Are you going to buy a yurt? How much is that going to cost? You need to do all these calculations before you get started looking at properties. Tip number three is how far away is this farm from town so you need to look at get like a look at try and see if you can find it on google map at least the area that they are describing and see how far it is away from town which leads me on to tip number four does it have utilities does it have access to utilities? How far away are the utilities? If you're wanting to get electricity in, how far away is the nearest, I don't know, electricity source, I suppose one can say. And if you are going to go off grid, then, you know, are you going to, does the farm have water, which is another tip that I'll be coming up to. But, um, does the, yeah how far away is the electricity are you wanting electricity are you going to use solar power you've got to be considering all of these different things so tip number five check out the access of the property like how good is the access 
because some of these properties that are really cheap, they're cheap because they are in the middle of nowhere and to get there you need to have four-wheel drive. So do you have a vehicle with four-wheel drive? Are you planning on buying a vehicle with four-wheel drive? So that's something to consider about the access. If you are not wanting to get a 4x4, then maybe you must be should be looking at a property that has um, either a tarred access or um, even if it's a dirt road, it's a dirt road that's not going to be too long and um, need a 4x4. Number six, tip number six is water. Portugal is quite a dry country so if you are getting a property without water you might be looking for trouble. So my advice is look to see if there are wells, springs, water mines, reservoirs, little dams, creeks, anything like that and then not only do you want to make sure that there's a well on the farm, you need to be making sure that that well does not run dry in summer because you don't want to be stuck for two months on a farm in the middle of nowhere <laughs> in a strange country uh, without water. So make sure that you make, check that that farm has got good water access. Tip number seven is very, very important and I can't stress enough how important it is. And that is while it is great to look at all the photos and videos of properties on the different estate agents websites, it's not the same as going there in person. So I'm spending a lot of my time looking at farms and dreaming on uh, um, which farm I might want to buy. But you know, sometimes the photos might not be doing it justice. Other times the photos might be a bit misleading. So nothing beats going there in person. So while I fully support everyone to look at all the farms and dream along by um, clicking on all these estate agents websites, don't buy a farm sight unseen. Make sure that you are going to book your trip to Portugal and that before you buy a farm you've actually seen it in person because some as I said elsewhere in this video sometimes you might see what you think is a farmhouse belonging to this farm and actually it's on the neighboring land and you just looking at these photos and you think oh this is what I'm buying and this is this great house that's there that I can live in but that house does not come with the property. So you need to go there in person. So this tip number seven is a very important tip. Tip number eight is to make sure that you check out the land parameters of the property you are buying. This is very, very, very important because a lot of these old farms have been subdivided and when they've been subdivided, uh, Uncle um, Paolo has uh, kept the farmhouse and um, uh, Auntie uh, Maria has uh, she, she's kept the one fruit orchard or some tree that's her favorite and then so you might think that you are buying a property that's got a farmhouse on only to discover that the farmhouse is actually 
the original farmhouse is not included in this parcel of land that you are buying. So make sure you check the land parameters to make sure that you know that your the tree that you fell in love with is actually on that property for example. That is very important because of the history of these large farms being subdivided into smaller farms and then sold off as little land parcels. Tip number nine has to be checking the land permissions because lands, uh, land, uh, land, especially agricultural land in Portugal, um, they have different classifications. So you get some land that is like uh, state land and you can't build on that. You get other land that has been zoned as agricultural land or rustic land and you can't build on that. You get some houses, uh, some places that look like they've got a little house on, but that building might be illegal. So you need to check out on that as well. And you get your best bet is to get something with a ruin on that predates 1951. But then it's going to mean you're going to have to fix up that ruin. So just check the land permissions. Just make sure before you hand any money over that be, if you plan on living on that farm that you have permission to live on that farm because you don't want to go to the expense of building a little house or, some, or buying a yurt and, 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 and putting it there only to discover that you are not allowed to live on that land. So double check that. So for that you probably need a good English speaking lawyer. I would say. I mean, that's one, what, what I'm going to be looking for once I arrive in Portugal and start looking at properties. I want to team up with a good lawyer that will make sure that the land that I buy, I'm going to be allowed to live on. And last but not least, my tip number 10 is that a lot of the, the properties, especially the cheaper properties, are actually quite small you know they're like a thousand a thousand square meters or three thousand square meters so this goes back to your purpose again what you're planning on doing there but you know if you go to the expense and you buy yourself a property that's only three thousand square meters and you absolutely love it and you want to expand you're going to find yourself a little bit boxed in maybe you need to be looking at something which will allow you to be able to expand or grow but not something too big but maybe something a little bit bigger than just an acre i think that's just my tip So my channel is about travel, recipes, and my journey to finding a farm in Portugal. So if you could help an old lady out by liking this video and commenting below and hitting the subscribe button, ringing the bell to be notified of upcoming videos. I post videos every week and uh, I usually post more than one video a week, but one of the videos is always about my journey to finding a farm in Portugal. Once I finally manage to get to Portugal, I'll be uh, filming videos of the different farms that I go and look at and you can then help me choose which one you think I should be able to buy. So like, subscribe, comment below, and I'll see you on my next adventure.